What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets to Rob. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing good. Before I get started talking about number eight through seven on the Mets top 10 prospect list of 2021, don't forget, guys, if you enjoy this video, smash on that like button. If you enjoy all my content, enjoy my videos, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, guys, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So number eight. On the Mets top 10 prospect list of 2021, according to me, is none other than Khalil Lee, the outfielder Khalil Lee. As you may know, he was acquired from the Kansas City Royals in a three team deal with the Mets, Royals, and Red Sox. And Andrew Benintendi going to the Royals and the Boston Red Sox getting prospects back from the Royals and the Mets. Now, when it comes to Khalil Lee, I ranked him at number eight on the Mets top 10 prospect list of 2021. And the reason for this is because when the Mets traded for him, they did give up a couple of guys in their top 10 that went to the Red Sox. So automatically Khalil Lee goes right into that top 10 list because he is pretty good and he has a lot of tools that make him one of the top prospects in the Mets system. And as you may know, the Mets prospect as a whole and their system is not one of the top ranked minor league systems in Major League Baseball. So when it comes to Khalil Lee, Khalil Lee was a third round pick of the Royals in the 2018 MLB draft out of high school from Virginia. He can be a very exciting prospect with a lot of tools. The two tools that I like the most from him is his arm in, in outfield, in the outfield, most likely in center field, and his speed. And defensively, he is a very, very defensive-minded center fielder, which the Mets do not have. And with his projected, projected arrival, the estimated arrival in the big leagues is this year in 2021. And that can mean a big-time move when it comes to the middle of the year when Khalil is expected to come up to this major league team and he can help out defensively. Now, when it comes to his bat, he does have power, but his contact is the major issue. His contact issue is 20. He has a 28% strikeout rate, which is extremely high for, a, for someone who is expected to be in the big leagues in 2021, but he does have power. He does have speed. And with that, can come to have a potential to be a 2020 type of player. 20 steals, 20 home runs. And that's a big deal, especially on this Mets team. The power, not so much, but the speed. The Mets don't have a lot of speed in this lineup. And Khalil Lee, not that he's expected to play and start for this team, obviously, in 2021, when he got Nimmo in center field and he got Pilar and Amora Jr., but Khalil Lee can be a potentially speedster off the base path in late inning games to get to move that runner over to second to steal a base maybe to be that winning run Khalil Lee can be that type of guy and he has that speed to do so he has a good on base percentage which is good especially with his speed but the big thing two things is his speed and defense and Khalil Lee even though he's expected to be up in 2021 Obviously, he will not start. But what you have to look at when it comes to 2022 as a potential starting center fielder is the DH rule that pop most likely will be in effect in 2022. And that's a big deal for the Mets because that puts Dominic Smith at third base, Pete Alonso as the potential DH, Brandon Nimmo to left field, and the number eight ranked prospect in the Mets system, Khalil Lee, guarding center field as the starter center fielder in 2022. And if Khalil Lee can show that he can make better contact in the minor league system and possibly one get moved up to the big leagues in 2021 in the middle of the season, and he can show he can help and make better contact over the year can be a big deal and could be a potential starter in center fielder for the New York Mets in 2022. And that is and a potential big possibility in seeing 
Khalil Lee in Queens in 2021 and potentially be the starter in 2022. And when it comes to Khalil Lee, I rank him at number eight on the Mets' top prospect list of 2021. When we look at Khalil's stats really quick, because that's a big deal when it comes to and we're going to see the contact issue that he has. There's a lot of a couple of years that he already been in this uh, team, but in 2018, as you can see, his batting average is not that good. It's 157, 2, 270 around that area, but he really struggled in the Arizona Fall League. And that's a big deal, again, with the contact. And if you look, he batted 264, 222, and 196. And that was in the in the last two years, 222 and 196 was in the Puerto Rican Winter League. Khalil Lee, if he gains that contact back or develop that contact skills that he would need to be a potential big league star, he needs that contact to pick tick up a little bit. And when it comes to Khalil Lee and his his stats. You see here that his batting average is the biggest issue. Stolen bases is not a problem. He can steal bases. But if you're not going to put the ball in play, he's going to rely heavily on his on-base percentage and his walks. And that's the biggest issue is when his contact rate is not good. Getting on base is an issue. And his speed is not going to mean anything if he doesn't get on base. And contact is the major issue with Khalil Lee. So Khalil Lee is ranked number eight based on my projections on the Mets 2021 prospect list. When it comes to the number seventh ranked prospect that I ranked in the Mets prospect of 2021 list, top prospect is none other than third baseman slash first baseman Mark Vientos. Now, Mark Vientos was drafted in the second round, number 59th overall in the 2017 MLB draft by the New York Mets. He has big league power. We know this. But, and po possibly has a chance to be a 20-plus home run threat. He shows a lot of ability, a lot of consistency to put the bat on the ball, which is a big thing that we don't see with Khalil Lee, but Mark Vientos puts the bat on the ball and has the power to show for it also and has the exit velo that you see and that what a lot of analytical teams look at now when it comes to their potential prospects and their major league type players is the exit velo. And Mark Vientos has that. The ball pops off his bat. We've seen it a little bit. With the minor league system, the minor league spring training this year, in 2021, he played a little bit. And what is interesting to look at, he played first base in the in spring training games this year in 2021 already. So, what the problem Mark Vientos might have is another player that we'll look at later in the top prospect list that is above him, and possibly him being blocked by another minor league player, and possibly J.D. Davis. And that's the biggest issue that Mark Vientos has. Now we've seen him play first base a little bit, but also he's blocked there also when it comes to Pete Alonso and Dominic Smith. But Mark Vientos could be a possibly trade piece that we might be looking at when it comes to the trade deadline. But when it comes to him right now being ranked seventh in the Mets minor league system, defensively, he should be average. He's not going to be great, but he's a regular to good to average type of third baseman. And he doesn't have a lot of range at third base either, which is uh, another thing that might block him coming to this Mets team in 2022, which is, ex is expected estimated time of arrival to the big leagues is 2022. That's why I think Mark Vientos could be a piece that we could use if J.D. Davis does not work out at third base and the possible Mets trade deadline deal that could bring in a third baseman, such as Chris Bryant, Jose Ramirez, Matt Chapman, players like that. And he might be a part of a deal because he is a third baseman. And when he, when a team trades a third baseman, they're probably looking at a, a young third base type of minor league guy that can potentially be up in the next year or two. And Mark Vientos is that guy. 
When we look at Mark Vientos and his stats over the last couple of years in the Mets minor league system at Kingsport and Columbia, you'll see right here. He had 268 plate appearances in 60 games. He struck out 43 times. He batted 287. Now, he puts the bat on the ball. He's a contact guy. He does have power, but his batting average shows he hasn't had less than a 250 batting average in the Mets minor league system, which is nice to see. So in 2017 and 2018, he batted 294 and 287. He knocked in 52 RBIs, had 11 home runs with the Kingsport Mets, the minor league rookie ball that he was in for the Mets in 2018. Batted 287, pretty good. That's what I like to see, especially when you see a lot of young guys look at the the exit velo and the the uppercutting of the swing and trying to hit home runs all the time. It's nice to see Mark Vientos do that at the plate. For the Columbia Fireflies in 2019, at the age of 19, he had 106 hits, 111 games. He batted 255, 62 RBIs, 12 home runs. Again, we expect him to be a 20-plus power home run type of guy. But again, his average is what I'm looking at. He puts the bat on the ball. He can hit to all fields, and he can put the bat on the ball and have the contact that we are looking for, especially from a young player. And Mark Vientos, when I ranked him number seven in the Mets' top prospect list, list of 2021, I look at Mark Vientos that he can potentially be a 20-plus home run guy, and his average – where he can probably be a bit between a 260 and 280 hitter in the majors. And that's what I like to see with Mark Vientos and why I ranked him number seven in the Mets prospect list. This was the top 10 Mets prospect list, number eight and number seven. The two guys, number eight, Khalil Lee, and number seven, Mark Vientos, is number eight and seven in the Mets top prospect list of 2021. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash on that like button. If you enjoy all my content, all my videos, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, guys, hit on that subscribe button, everybody. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.